Good day, Alex. Chad is here. Um, first of all, what, what can you tell us about Tabernet? We heard that you might have a bit of a hamstring problem there. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like yeah, after further investigation over the last couple of days that yeah, he's going to miss this week with a hamstring strain. Um, we're just going to put him in doubt yeah, for the week after as well, um, given we're only on a six-day break the, the following week. So, yeah, it's unfortunate. You know, he's clearly building in some good form and yeah, he's got another setback. Was that um, affecting him earlier in the game or was that something he picked up in that final quarter? No, it was probably, I think it was the third, middle of the third quarter. So that's why it was a little bit strange and we had to do a bit of investigation investigation over the last couple of days as to whether it was a, a knock or a, or a strain. Um, yeah, so he, he managed to finish out the game and you know, kick that goal in the last quarter on uh, on the hammy it was done in, done on. So yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a different one, but yeah, he's going to miss the next probably couple of weeks. And Josh Tracy kicked four goals in the waffle. Do you look to bring him in as a direct what? Uh, we'll, we'll work through that later today, yeah. Um, we like the structure we've got down forward at the moment. Um, yeah, it's just the personnel that we put into the, that structure um, we'll decide on later in selection. Yeah. Well, what's another option that you could go with? Well, there's plenty of options. Got a lot of tools on our list. Yep. yep. Uh, Sturt, is he in the mix as well? Uh, probably not for that role, no. Yeah, no worries. And then the guys who are in the COVID protocols, what are their chances, more specifically Chapman and Young? Uh, we'll have to see how they go later, the Savo. They they get out of ISO yeah, later today, and then um, we'll have to see how, how they go in a session we run with them. Um, yeah, we, we probably won't know um, until tomorrow morning with those, those two guys. Um, and as I've said plenty of times, and... Everyone's saying around COVID, it's such an individual thing. So, um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. It's the, they've, they've both done different amounts of running on treadmills at home um, and both pulled up um, differently from them. So, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. It's um, such an individual thing and um, we really need to get eyes on them before we um, declare them in or out. Yep, thanks for that. Cheers. Ethan Lee Chalk here. Um, Sean Darcy must be a huge out, but Lloyd Meek coming in is a good opportunity, a good opportunity for him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like I said plenty of times, Meeky, you know, he's, he's stiff not to be playing AFL footy. He's, he was in good form when he played for us. Um, yeah, it's only he's got a really good ruckman in front of him at the moment. So, yeah, he'll come back into the side. Uh, yeah, he's proven that he um, can mix it with the best at AFL level and... Yeah, we've got full confidence in, in him coming in and executing his role. Playing Geelong in Geelong is one of the tough road trips and is always a difficult task. It must be a good opportunity for a young team to take on an experienced side on their home ground. And what is your game plan against them? <laughs> well, I won't go into too, mi too much detail about the game plan, but uh, yeah, you're right. It's an exciting opportunity for us. Uh, you know, that's. Uh, um, I think there is some negativity around uh, the trip to Geelong. Um, and sometimes, as a, as a playing group, we can get you can get caught, and a coaching group, you can get caught up in the stuff that doesn't actually help you the win the game. So, been really impressed with our players' ability to keep resetting into what's important in their own games and what's important for us. And um, this week will be no different. So, uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to the challenge. Andrew Brayshaw has a, has had an impressive start to the season. As he's coached the last uh, couple of seasons, how have you seen his development as a player and a leader? Uh, yeah, probably the same as you guys have seen it. He's uh, he really invests in his teammates. He's he's a great connector within the club, um, and you know that's probably where his lead his main strength in leadership happens. Um, he's still working through his his on field leadership and um, what that looks like and and where he can impact um, from a leadership point of view on field. Um, and oh yeah, he's, we've seen his game go to another level. He's um, a great two-way runner. Um, he invests in both sides of the ball, in offence and defence. Um, yeah, and I think he's been able to build his in, inside game and outside game. So, yeah, he's becoming um, the complete uh, midfielder. Um, but the thing, the thing that holds him in great stead is he's never comfortable. He's always looking for areas to improve on in his game. And, um, yeah, he sets a great example for the rest of our players in that sense. One last question. Hey, Justin, um, 
one last question. It must be <clears throat> it must have been good to see Rory Lobb have a good game last week um, and have a big impact on the game. Yeah, I, I, it was good to see him hit the scoreboard and get some reward for effort. Uh, and it's what we value is a good game um, from our forwards versus what the outside world values. They're two different things. So, um, you know, last last week he hit the scoreboard, which was great. Um, the weeks before, he's still having an impact for us and still playing his role. And I've just been really um, impressed with his competitiveness. Um, his ability to chase and tackle is um, up there with the best in the comp in terms of um, players his size. Uh, so, yeah, he, he's been really consistent. Um, yeah, and like I said plenty of times, it's great to see him get some reward for effort. Um, on on the scoreboard on the weekend. Justin, um, we've seen a couple of PCL injuries to Ruckman uh, in recent weeks. Do you have any concerns about the the way Ruckman contests are uh, taking shape at the moment? Uh, not not really. Um, well, I think uh, the introduction of the the circle has seen a real um, reduction in those PCL injuries. Um, yeah, we'll just probably, from my point of view, have to see a bit more of a sample size and um, look at um, how many PCLs have happened over the last probably five, ten years and um, rather than just the one week, I think we can get a little bit, um, yeah, reactive sometimes and, and react too quick. Um, but, yeah, largely I, th I think the, the introduction of the circle has reduced the PCL injuries and made it a lot safer for, for Ruckman. Luke Hodge levelled a bit of criticism at Sean Darcy this morning for the, I guess, the way he went into the clash which injured Mark Pitney. Um Do you have any issue with Sean's action? No, I don't. No, no, not at all because um, it's within the rules. Uh, he's watching the ball uh, as he hits the ball and, and wins the hit out. Um, and oh, I think if you watched uh, majority of Ruckman um, across the comp, they, they yeah they, they they watch the opposition um, more than probably what they have done in the past. So I've got no issues with what Sean is doing, and until the AFL tell us otherwise, um, he'll continue to play that way. And can I just ask you about Jai Amos and his development? I, I think I caught you talking about Josh Tracy earlier. I'm not sure if, whether uh, Jai was tied into that, but have you seen his form at waffle level? Uh, yeah, really impressive, and probably more more so the impressive bit comes off the back of the the fact that he hasn't done much of a preseason. He missed most of that, most of preseason with um, the quad, um, and he's recovering from that patellar injury at the end of last year. So he's coming off a pretty low base. Um, he's been able to uh, yeah um, un get an understanding of our, our game plan and the way we want him to function as a forward. Um, yeah, and it was yeah, it was it was a great game by him on the weekend. He, he stood up when it counted. Um, I thought his application to um, the defensive actions was were, was were great were greater than what they have been, um, and he got the reward um, you know on the scoreboard um, through his um, work rate and his ability to take contested marks um, and provide options. So. Yeah, he, he's he's um he's still building his fitness. So I think um you know in terms of how fit he is, and I think we're you know probably up to around eighty percent. So he needs to build a body of work, um you know, and build that fitness, um, and that'll only help him um, with his performances, obviously. So yeah, he's made an impressive start to his um his waffle career. Um, you know, sometimes we we lose sight of the fact that some of these players that come into AFL have never played a, a game against men before. Then um, you know his last two weeks or his first two games um, for points with uh, against men. So you know, him and him and Neil Erasmus were, were were really good on the weekend, and that's really positive. So Justin, just to follow up, that are you expecting to see Amos at senior level this year at some point? Oh, that depends on his form um, and depends on his application. Um, to get it, to building a you know an AFL body, um, last thing I want to do is throw him out there before he's he's ready and before he's um, unable to compete. Um, so yeah, the, he he's largely in control of that. So um, you know I want to see him um, you know put a 
good body of work together before he's available for selection. Um, you know, he's missed a lot of pre-season. He's still not quite there with his fitness. Um, and yeah, he's got plenty to work on in his game, but he's definitely taking steps in the right direction. And um, just on Young and Chapman, sorry, I from making you repeat yourself. I missed a little bit earlier. Did you say they both won't be at training this morning? Uh, they won't be at training this morning. Uh, they'll do a session off-site um, this afternoon when they come out of um, isolation. Just one, have you got any more COVID issues after the five players uh, went down last week? No, no. Touch wood. Um, it's all tracking in the right direction for us. So, yeah, get Connor back this week. Um, yep, so all good. Uh, the government announced yesterday a relaxing of a lot of rules on Friday. What uh, effect, if any, does that have on the club? None really, um, apart from the fact that our risk goes up a, a little bit more. So um, yeah, our players will still be held to the same standard that's been holding us in good shape. Um, yeah, we just probably need to be a little bit more cautious around um, yeah gatherings or uh, going out in public. Um, yeah, so it probably puts a little bit more risk on the club, but um, our players have been, really, have been really diligent and we'll be asking them to do the same. So it's interesting that the public were almost told relax and get back to normal, but if anything, that makes you on even a higher alert. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this has been the thing um, um, with club landers, but quite often um, held, held to a higher um, standard than outside of club land. And, that takes its toll on people and people, yeah, people and players and yeah, staff and players. So we need to be mindful of that as well. Um, we understand it's a long season and we've got to make sure that yeah we don't burn our people out. So um, yeah, we're trying to find the balance in that. But um, so far, yeah, can't, couldn't have been prouder of our staff and, and players the way they've handled it. Just on just on your two previous meetings with Geelong as coach, I imagine two of your, your more disappointing nights at the club. What, what what things do you take or learn from from those games heading into this week? Uh, yeah, it all comes back to pretty important parts of our game, and that's contest um, and our pressure hasn't been at the level it needs to be against Geelong. I think they've um, yeah been too big and too strong for us at times. So um, hopefully, you know we're put a lot of work into our, um, our, our fitness and um, a lot of work in the gym over the over the pre-season and um, yeah, hopefully we can um, yeah, measure up in, in that sense, which I'm really confident we can. Um, I think the other thing is we've just been spooked at times and gone away from our footy and uh, yeah, we haven't, we haven't um, provided Geelong with a, a real good look at what our footy is and that's probably been the most disappointing thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've been pretty consistent with that. Um, yeah, we've been pretty ruthless with our footy this year and, um, you know, whether we win or lose, we just want to come off the ground at the end of the game and, and say that we, we played our way. Um, yeah, so that needs to be our goal this week and that's something we haven't done in the past against Geelong. And ahead of a pretty significant challenge, how frustrating is it to lose both Darcy and Tabernacle this week of all weeks? Oh, it's not ideal, but... I'm really confident that, um, yeah, we've still got the players out there to compete, um, absolutely. And um, I'm pretty, really confident in the players we, we bring in to be able to do the job. So, um, yeah, although it's disappointing, it doesn't, I don't lose any faith in what we're trying to do or um, I don't lose any confidence in going down to Geelong and putting on a real good show. And just last one from me, are you expecting um, Paddy Dangerfield to play? Uh, we've prepared for him to play, yep.